in Hotspot 2.0, it really had its genesis in a couple different things, right? The, the first one was the cellular operators. They were bringing iPhones onto their networks. They were bringing Android devices onto their networks. And as the popularity of that grew, those cellular networks became really congested. And what the, what the operators needed to do is they needed to offload some of that traffic. So they started looking at Wi-Fi technology as a way to offload. And that was really the first time where carriers thought Wi-Fi might be really a good thing for us. The issue was is that when people took their laptops to coffee shops or to airports or things like that to get on Wi-Fi, it was hard. You, you, know, you had to know how to bring up your connection manager. You had to know what an SSID was. Heaven forbid there might be five SSIDs there and you had to choose which one and which one did you choose. It was really confusing to users. Contrast that to the GSM network. In GSM technology, we've all had the experience where you fly abroad, you get off the plane and you turn your phone on. And in a matter of a minute or something, you're on their network, you can make a call, you get billed for it, everything's been taken care of. Why couldn't Wi-Fi be the same way? Well, we thought it could. We just needed the right technology. We needed to apply that technology to Wi-Fi. And that was the second part of Hotspot 2.0 making Wi-Fi as secure and automatic to use as cellular. When Hotspot 2.0 started, we knew we had a secure technology. The Wi-Fi Alliance had it branded under WPA2 Enterprise. That really was comprised of three things. 802.1x, 802.11i, which was the Airlink encryption, and EAP authentication. And the EAP authentication was, uh, of course, they've been done by the IETF. It's been standardized by the IETF for a long time. But that whole WPA2 enterprise technology, that's been used in enterprises very successfully for a number of years. Why wasn't that applied to public Wi-Fi networking? You know, there's a lot of people in the industry felt that it should have been and should be applied to Wi-Fi public networking. And so that's what we did. What we needed was something different. We needed the network to tell the phone, here's the credentials that I, can, uh, that I can authenticate. 802.11u provides a way that the hotspot network can advertise who its roaming partners are, and then the phone can say, oh, I have a credential from that operator, or I have a credential from this operator. It completely takes the trial and error out of it and makes a scalable way for the phone to automatically and securely get onto a hotspot network. It's the automatic part that both is great for users because they don't have to do anything, it's great for the mobile network operators because it actually does get the users off their cellular network and can offload the traffic. And it's great for the venue operators that can offer services over Wi-Fi to their customers. Operator policy for network selection. So the idea there is that a carrier will want to put some policy on the phone that will influence the connection manager in which Wi-Fi hotspot to select. What the policy allows an operator to do is help control its roaming costs because it has to pay for those wholesale operations and the transfer and the transit of all those packets through the visiting network. In online signup, uh, basically what it allows the infrastructure to do is put a credential on the phone and put operator policy for network selection on the phone as well. Now, imagine you're a cable operator, an MSO. You have customers that you need to actually bring onto your network. You need to give them credentials and policies so they can operate. Well, that's what this is used for. Imagine that you're a laptop. You don't have a SIM card. Or imagine that you're a tablet. A tablet doesn't have a SIM card either. Well, these, these devices, to bring them onto the operator networks, they need to be provisioned with credentials. And operators each have their favorite kind of credential, be it a username and password, be it a SIM if you're a cellular operator, or perhaps a, an X509 certificate if you're a WISP. But you can put those on, on the phone and then on the device uh, and then you know, basically bring that device into your network smoothly. I think one of the great things about Hotspot 2.0 is it's not just for carriers, it's for enterprises. Imagine if you're the manager of a retail store or a shopping mall or an airport. Do you want customers on your Wi-Fi networks automatically and securely? Absolutely you do. You go into the hotel the first day, you're there, you enter your room number and you say you want Wi-Fi service. Well, we all do that today, but the problem is every time you go back to use the Wi-Fi again, you have to re-enter your room number. You have to remember to bring up your browser. With Hotspot 2.0, you do that once the day you're there. 
Then no matter where you go in the hotel, your device will automatically connect. As chair of Hotspot 2.0, I do get to see a lot of different companies that are involved. One thing I noticed was Ruckus was always there. Ruckus was, was in the forefront of those activities, and Hotspot 2.0 seemed to be really strategic to them. Ruckus did everything it took, and they actually were in the test bed. And the reason why it's such a big win is because all of the equipment that comes in to get certified after that, it's going to get tested against Ruckus equipment. Really, they're just being leaders in that, in, in that test bed, in that whole environment.